Now, before we get into designing FRP for beams, we have to get introduced to a, a very problematic issue that we have with FRPs. So in the beginning, we discussed that gluing this um, FRP material to another completely different material, which is our reinforced concrete member, is extremely hard. And as you can see, sometimes they get detached. This is called debonding of FRP. There are some solutions for it. We will discuss it and we'll see what is the problem of it. So um, if it fails, it will cause my structure to go back to its initial case. So it will have decays and deterioration. It will be problematic and uh, there might be sudden failure as well. One of the causes that this debonding happens is uh, the shear and the normal stresses. Uh, it can happen under earthquake as well. Suddenly a very strong earthquake strikes your building. This exerted shear and normal stresses will cause the, the bonding strength to reduce and debonding to happen. Another problem is the moisture. So if the FRP and the reinforced concrete are not applied properly and they're not waterproofed, the moisture or the humidity of the environment can cause debonding, exactly like a glue. If you just apply water and water and water, after a while it will give up. And all of that, the most important thing is the improper application. So um, the concrete surface should be properly prepared for the FRP to be applied. You cannot just find any surface of concrete and just apply your FRP. Uh, there should be some uh, pre-processing um, pre in it to make sure that there are some uh, good connection uh, and uh, the, the concrete surface is not very smooth. So there are some bits and pieces which can clearly get the glue in and connect to the FRP. So uh, that is very important. We will look at how uh, we do the curing and how we are going to apply FRP to a concrete se uh, section at the end of this course. So stay tuned. Now, debonding has different types. Uh, for example, imagine a crack happens, an immediate crack due to the flexual um, behavior of the beam. So there is some loading. This is a simply supported beam. I'm just cutting it from here. Some cracks happen and then following the crack, debonding happens. Yeah. If that bit of the concrete fails, the FRP won't stand in. There are some other types, critical diagonal cracks. As you can see, these are like small cracks happening. This is like a sudden one major crack. Again, debonding happens this case, I will have the critical diagonal crack. Yes, so CDC. With concrete cover separation as well, the concrete cover gives up. You see, there's another crack here. Again, debonding happens. Um, the concrete cover generally giving up. So this FRP is connected to the concrete um, cover. If the cover fails, then the main section doesn't have any FRP attached to it. So that's another problem. Under pure bending, you can see moment and moment is applied, cracks are happening, and again, this FRP is getting detached. And um, there are some end interfacial debon uh, debonding as well. As you can see, FRP gets detached because it wasn't properly glued or it was like free. Um, it generally happens to anything that you stick to anything. Usually the failure happens at the end points. Now we will see all of these cases and how can we solve it. So one of the suggestions is that there is an optimal bond length. So this is the limit. If you calculate this for any FRP that you have, your length of connection should be always bigger than that. If your length of bonded area is less than the preferred or the limit, then you will have a debonding issue and one of these can happen. The formula is very simple. It's a maximum of either 20 centimeters or this formula. Let's look at it in more details, which um, again, it has lots of bits and pieces like thickness of your FRP, elastic modulus of your FRP, 
the design bond strength between FRP and the concrete, which is calculated like this, some factors, and um, the the fracture energy, which can be calculated like this, which relates to FCM and FCTM. FCM is the mean value of your concrete compressive strength. FCTM is the mean value of concrete tensile strength. If you remember, the tensile strength is very small, while in concrete, the compressive strength is very big. So uh, all of these values, you usually get it from the, at the factory and easily can be um, calculated. Uh, there is a factory of safety or a confidence factor as well. And just in this formulation, remember the Kg and Kb. So Kg is a corrective factor which comes from the experiment and it really depends on how the FRP is applied. I told you at the end of this course, we will see what are the different methods that you can apply FRP. One of the methods is pre-cured or wet layup. Depending on this, uh, how you're applying um, the FRP, your Kg will be different. Then there is KB, which is the geometric um, correction factor. And it's between a ratio between FRP and the concrete width. So what is happening here between the width of your concrete and the width of your FRP. And then you have the thickness of the FRP, which is just few millimeters. Using those, you can calculate the LED, which is the limit, the optimal bond length. And if your connection is bigger than optimum bond length, you're free. Then whatever force you apply, the bonding will not be the reason of the failure. Uh, the failure can be like the FRP to give up and it reaches to the strength or the concrete gives up and the whole system fails. So this is the limit that you have to calculate. It's maximum. You calculate this value. You calculate this value. If this comes up 400 and this is 200, the 400 will be the right answer. And it clearly mentions that the maximum is the bigger, the better. So the more limit you have means that you will prevent the debonding better. So 400, for example, will be the right answer. Remember, the, the formula depends on some properties of FRP and some properties of the concrete itself. So this optimum length brings these two units together. Okay, this debonding, as we mentioned, can happen at different parts of the FRP. The most common ones were at the ends and in the middle. So the debonding modes will go to mode 1, which debonding happens at the ends, and mode 2, which the debonding starts from the vertical cracks in the concrete. Yeah? So this is, let's say, at any point of my member, and due to these cracks, you see the debonding between FRP and the member is happening. Another case was that this is the FRP, for example, in my beam, and the debonding is happening at its end. Any of these will affect the strength of my FRP. Now, strength of FRP is very important, and in the coming slides, you will see that I continuously use this strength to see whether my design is sufficient or not. This strength, or the design debonding strength of FRP is affected whether you have mode 1 debonding or you have mode 2 debonding. The mode 1 itself has two cases, whether the bond length is equal or larger than that optimal bond length that we saw, so this guy, whether they are bigger than this or smaller than this. If they're equal or larger, then the strength is calculated using this formulation, which similar to the length, it depends on some properties of the FRP, as well as the fracture energy, which the fracture energy, if you remember over here, it depended on some correction factors and some geometric factors, as well as the mean concrete strength and mean concrete tension strength so compressive strength of concrete and tension strength of the concrete as well as a factor of correction or safety factor and if it's shorter than shorter than the optimal bond length then that the bonding strength that I had will be multiplied by some other factors which will bring it a little bit lower 
yes so remember this fdd is a very important factor and this is the actual strength of my frp this fdd depends on the debonding of my frp as well so that debonding method will indicate whether my strength is high or low now imagine this what is stress what is strain what is elastic modulus and how are these three related to each other we mentioned that elastic modulus is stress over strain yeah now strain as you have read in previous slides is the maximum stress so strain is the same stress we just show it with f now in a normal situation if stress over strain is equal to elastic modulus stress on its own will be elastic modulus times strain this formulation over there kind of represents that so you see the elastic modulus and the strain is inside these two fracture energy as well as the thickness of the frp so in frp instead of simply going and getting the elastic modulus of frp and dividing it by strain because the bonding happens it's not as straightforward as other material we have to go through a formulation now if the debonding is happening at the ends this is the formulation and remember this in this course you do not need to memorize any of the formula uh, we will give you the formula if necessary during the exam as well but you have to know what each of these will represent and how they are defined now going back to case one so if the bond equal or larger this is the design the bonding strength of frp if the bond length is shorter than the optimal bond length then the same formula is multiplied by some lengths of bond length and optimal bond length to make it a little bit lower now if it's the bonding number two and it's happening at any other point than the ends you see the design bonding strength of frp the same fdd will be different we have added a number two beside it to make sure that it indicates mode two is happening and as you can see the formula is a little bit longer than this so this one had the fracture energy which on its own was this the second one has brought those formulation inside it and it has added a kq which is a coefficient factor and different values exist for it so let's look at the formula there is the elastic modulus of frp there is the thickness of frp so the thickness of frp is very important we have the mean value of concrete compressive strength mean value of concrete tensile strength which we said is very small tensile it doesn't have that much but the compressive strength is very good we have a confidence factor this confidence factor again comes uh, depending on a code and situation we have a corrective factor as we discussed and we have a geometric corrective factor as well as we discussed depending on the the width of the frp and the width of your concrete member so the formula although it looks very scary but it's just a combination of some corrective factors as well as some properties of your um, section now there is another solution as well that we can ignore the the debonding then we use the actual strength of our frp uh, which is anchorage so as you can see we just bring some anchoring systems like these you see there is a steel plate and then bolted in or a steel plate at the ends and then bolted in which then you can ignore and neglect all of the cautions that we mentioned it prevents all of these um, it is not very sophisticated it needs an expert to decide where the anchorage is applied there are different ways of doing anchorage for example frp transverse bars or u wraps uh, with frp sheets as you can see so these are methods so if in case it says the anchorage is provided you don't need to um, apply mode one or mode two uh, debonding checks and can be neglected 
but with cautious yes because the design and implementation of these are a bit tricky and we will discuss it later on as well now we got to a, sl a slide which has the ACI logo as I mentioned this is not part of this lecture it's just for your information in case you're interested or in case you you want to do some further research to see how the American Concrete Institute gives some clause for the bonding of FRP and as you can see the, the formulations give or take follows the same trend it's only some factors are a little bit different but elastic modulus of FRP and thickness of the FRP and the um, compressive um, concrete strength are always the same anywhere in the world in any code.